Sheboygan man charged in fatal shooting, Sheboygan County residents invited to attend Sheriff's Citizens Academy, assembly set to okay tougher drunk driving penalties. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, February 13th, 2020. It was supposed to be just a regular fight, like people fight all the time. That, according to one of the people involved in a fight that ended in a tragedy last week on Sheboygan's south side. 18-year-old Daniel Marez of Sheboygan was formally charged in Sheboygan County Court Tuesday with first-degree intentional homicide. For that fight that ended in a fatal shooting last Thursday afternoon of 23-year-old Michael Kirsch. Court documents say it all began on reports of a fight between two females at the Sheboygan bus station. Police responded and broke up the fight, which had started because of a breakup among teens. After officers broke up the fight at the bus station, the group gathered outside the home of one of the witnesses on Clara Avenue and began arguing. Witnesses say that during the fight, Maras reached into his sweatshirt, pointed his gun at Kirsch, firing the weapon twice. As soon as Kirsch was shot, Maras and his girlfriend, 17-year-old Addison Mim, fled the scene. When police arrived on the scene, Kirsch had already passed away. Police went looking for Maras and Mim and located them at a home on Cherry Lane near, nearly a half hour after the shooting. When questioned, Maras denied being in a fight and maintained that story until police recovered a weapon in his backpack of his girlfriend. He later claimed it was self-defense because Kirsch had pulled a knife on him. Mim is facing several charges for harboring a felon, along with drug-related charges inside of her backpack. In addition to the handgun used to the, in the shooting, officers found drugs, drug paraphernalia, and prescription medication. She is facing up to 10 years in prison and is a, and a $25,000 fine. Mim, who had her initial appearance on Tuesday, had her cash bond set at $7,500 and will be back in court for a preliminary hearing on February 19th. Maras is facing life in prison if he is found guilty, and he was expected to appear Wednesday morning for his initial appearance. They are both being held in Sheboygan County Jail. While the presidential primaries are making news, Wisconsin and local voters will not be voting their preference for the nation's highest office until April. Meanwhile, the February 18th election does have some notable races. All of Sheboygan County will be able to vote for a state Supreme Court seat, and those candidates are Daniel Kelly, Jill Karofsky, and Ed Fallone. Voters in Sheboygan's 6th Aldermanic District will choose between Joseph Vugrinovich, uh, Mark Harmon, and Dean Decker. Sheboygan County Supervisor District 20 had three candidates, Mike Zimmerman, Patrick Johnson, and Brian Huffman. Voters in the Random Lake School District will be able to vote for as many as two candidates from a field comprised of Renee Rathke, Laura Mayer, Charles Mueller, Russell Sarasig, and Elizabeth Kocher. Sheboygan County Clerk John Dolson does not expect a large turnout, noting that the 2000 2018 primary, which also had a Supreme Court contest, only brought 19% of Sheboygan County voters to the polls. Residents across Sheboygan County can learn what it's like to serve in the Sheriff's Department by attending a Citizens Academy starting March 5th. While City of Sheboygan residents has their own academy through the Police Department, the Sheriff's Academy is open countywide to those 18 and older. Participants will learn the many facets of law enforcement through numerous hands-on opportunities 
while gaining a better understanding of how and why law enforcement serves the community as they do. The free sessions will be held for three hours on Thursday evenings for 11 weeks beginning March 5th and applicants must be returned by March 1st. You can apply online or in person at the Sheriff's Office at 525 North 6th Street in Sheboygan. Applications, again, must be returned by 5 o'clock on March 1st. A push of Arcadic Air has created hazardous conditions for area commuters this Thursday morning. The Wisconsin State Patrol says that major roads, including I-43 and Highway 23, were ice covered as early this morning and temperatures around 10 above too cold for de-icing to work well. Although snowfall was not enough to warrant an advisory, several accidents did result from the slippery conditions. While snow de departs, the coldest air of the season w moves in and winds will be below zero today and drop as low as 26 below tonight. And so advisories are likely to be issued by the National Weather Service. Temperatures should moderate by the weekend with a return to near normal temperatures. The state assembly is expected to pass tougher penalties for repeat drug offense, drunk drivers. The bill would increase the minimum prison time for a fifth or sixth offense OWI charge from six months to 18. The assembly is scheduled to take up the matter late Tuesday, and if it passes, it would then go on to the Governor Tony Evers' desk. Judges would be able to give lesser penalties at their own discretion, and the measure already passed the Senate on a voice vote late last year. While the measure is expected to increase operational costs at the state prisons, it does have the support of some key groups, such as the state chiefs of Police Association and Mothers Against Drunk Driving, or MADD. The Wisconsin Tavern League has not taken a stand on the issue one way or another. And finally, as election season rolls on in Wisconsin, UW-Madison is getting back into the political polling business. UW Elections Research Center Director Barry Burden says they are partnering with the YouGov polling team to do polls in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Sometime around late February, you should see them in public, and I think it is going to be a really important data point as we look ahead to the primaries in Wisconsin on April 7th, Burden said. He says that while the Marquette Law School poll has been the stalwart source of political data, it has been the only statewide resource for the last six or seven years. So here at the Elections Research Center, we are hoping to add to what we can learn about the electorate in Wisconsin by doing some additional surveys with somewhat different focus. The UW poll will be an online survey and the Marquette Law School polls relies on phone calls made to poll participants. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.